said that you lived on the 15th floor. Some people have described living in Trelik as living in the sky. What is living in Trelik to you? Um, living in Trelik is like being able to see, you know, your whole landscape. And I think that's really refreshing. And you can see for miles. And I think living in the sky, if that's what people call it, it kind of feels clear. I don't know. It's uh, interesting because you can just look out and you just feel like everything's nice when you can look out far and see a beautiful view. And then you can also see so many things happening through the year, bonfire nights, and you can see it all across London. And, you know, Christmas, you can see lights. And so you feel like you're kind of looking down on a little picture sometimes. <laughs> Do you have any views about the graffiti area around the back? I think the graffiti area um, is really nice. I think it's great. And I know it was in the play as well, radio play. Um, I think there should be more things like that for young people or older big babies um, <laughs> to go and have fun and explore and be creative. That's why I think they should do, you know, I know they have the gardening thing across the road as well now to learn gardening. And I think they should have more things like that for not just young people, but people to try new things, you know. So I think sports and you know, art and things like that, it's really important. So it's a shame of it's going. It seems there is a fair amount of art in some ways associated with the people mm. around, around and in the tower. Do you, think, do you think that's the case or do you think that's maybe just some individuals? Or do you I have like a view that maybe there is like an artistic community in some ways? I think um, there's an eccentric view in the tower and probably an artistic view, sometimes both, but I think the characters are almost not real sometimes. If I've told, I know I've told people stories before about certain, like, oh my God, you never guess what they did. Or, you know, and there's one woman in the tower who always wears all yellow and we call her Miss Sherbet. And um, I always say, t say things that she said to me, I'll mention to people and they'll be like, a person that wears all yellow, that's like ridiculous. Like they don't really do that. And I'm like, no, she does. It's like, so I think the characters are larger than life. And some of them are eccentric. A lot of them are artistic too. Maybe it's a bit, I don't know, a comparison would be perhaps, I don't know if you've heard of the Chelsea Hotel, where the people were a bit crazy at there, um, where everyone that moved into the Chelsea Hotel were like artists or they were eccentric. Or, so I think it does have that sort of essence to it, something different. I can laugh about it now. <laughs> you started off by saying this was a magical place, and then you tell us about that. Yeah. Um, well, I suppose what I want to say is it is a magical place. I'm not going to move away from somewhere just because of something like that. But th that's not the only thing that's happened there with other flats. So I definitely think you know, it's like yin and yang, you know, where there's beauty, there's something very ugly as well sometimes. And I think sometimes that's kind of got that within it too. Um, you know, there'd be other stories, like somebody said, oh, the whole flat got robbed or whatever. And um, they took a widescreen television, but the CCTV showed nobody leaving with a widescreen television. So obviously that was somebody in the block that had burgled their neighbor or something. So this, <laughs> so I'm telling you all the bad stories today. Um, but so it is a magical place, nothing will take that away. And if you think what it used to be like, I mean, obviously I wasn't there, but I've heard, you've probably researched it for your project, that there was worse things. <laughs> so when you say magical, what do you mean? Uh, when I say magical, 
I think when you feel something differently, when you go into a place and you feel not like transformed, but you feel heightened in your senses, then I describe that as magical because it's unique. Not just the look, um, not just the people, uh, it's a mixture, combination. Um, I would probably say I feel Trellick elevated me um, in a, yeah, a combination of those things. I felt the people were very friendly, whereas even though that thing happened, um, <laughs> uh, hopefully that was my neighbour, uh, I felt the people were friendly, so I felt there was kindness. And I think when you feel kindness with your neighbours, that is how people should really live instead of having enemies so i feel i, I had kind neighbors and friends there and i also felt it was nice because i work from home a lot i could sit in the window and look out and you'd be inspired and you sort of see all the other things going on out there so that was another thing that sort of elevated me and um, just the fun of the building and the stories and something was always happening, so that was always good. <laughs> We'd love to know how Trellick has inspired your work and what else you do. Mm. Uh, I think Trellick inspires me. I don't know how much of it is in my work. Obviously, I did the documentary, um, which was really fun, and I think the place is amazing and I think the plays that you did were great but I just feel living in it is inspiring and um, or li when I did live in it <laughs> now I just have a small garden to look out to it's not the same so I left in 2013 so yeah and if you, you moved in end of 2010. Okay. Yeah. And you, you live with flatmates, is that right? I had flatmates, yeah. yeah. I had one, then I had, we had two, because <laughs> we had a spare room. Do you remember any particular days with your flatmates in the flat? Um, oh my God. <laughs> too many funny times. Um, I'm trying to think. Okay, so there was one, the on Valentine's Day, um, the one we were kind of filming, um, one of my flatmates was got really, really sick and um, had to, it's kind of funny now, it's sort of bit, bittersweet, but um, we had to phone the ambulance because she said like she couldn't see, I don't know why, she just like was really run down and she was really dizzy and so, you know, when you call 111 and they're like, oh my God, you know, you're dying. No, so they got like an ambulance to come round. And then at the same time, my other flatmate came in with this crushed rose going, he dumped me. And, uh, <laughs> and I was like in the middle trying to help my other flatmate, like go with the um, paramedic. And then the other one was crying with the crushed rose. And it was Valentine's Day and he dumped her on Valentine's Day. Not very nice. So in that way, it was sad, but we always stuck together. And I think that's nice when you have flatmates because you can, you know, or we used to have something as well which we called DirtyDinners.com, which is when you're feeling really lazy. We used to go down to um, George's, do you do it down there? <laughs> There's a fish and chip shop down there. I think it's been going for ages, hasn't it? Si 60s or something, it's an old fish and chip shop. Anyway, we'd have DirtyDinners.com and just go down there, <laughs> like fish and chips and eggs and like, <laughs> then we'd just like lie in a coma. <laughs> I'm telling you all the disgusting things today. <laughs> Could I ask why you left? Um, I left because my uh, the people who owned it obviously gave it to their daughter and she sold it. But we did try to not get anyone to buy it for ages. Um, so we would try little tricks when people came to view because we didn't want to leave. <laughs> um, which was funny. <laughs> um, so one of my flatmates smoked, normally on the balcony, but 
I don't know if you know in Trellick, when you go in the toilet, there's you open the cupboard and there's the whole toilets. You know, you can't get up there. It's like this tiny little hole thing. But she would go in the bathroom just before they arrived, s open the cupboard thing and smoke a fag. And then they'd come in and they'd open it. It'd be like a cloud of smoke. And she'd be like, oh, the people upstairs are smoking again. Oh, it's disgusting. And, uh, <laughs> and they'd be like, oh, oh. And... Uh, <laughs> That was quite a funny thing. Or like, and we'd be like um, <laughs> do, doing yoga and like just pretend yoga. We weren't really doing it. And then we'd be there and we'd be like, don't mind us. And then we'd be like getting to some weird position. <laughs> look like, oh my God, who are these weirdos? <laughs> so yeah, we tried our best, but obviously, <laughs> and then we'd leave it like really messy if they were coming. <laughs> Somebody didn't care though. They don't mind smoke coming down the toilet shaft. <laughs> Why didn't you want to leave? Um, because we love living there and it was um, quite reasonable rent and it was fun and so yeah, we wanted to, and we also knew they're very rare that they flats come up to rent there because they're normally either selling them or they are, um, you know, uh, council flats so they're not for normal people to rent. And how did you feel when you eventually had to leave? Um, I felt sad because I didn't want to go, but I suppose it's like anything, you have to close the chapter. I mean, luckily I've made so many good friends there that I go there nearly every week so I can get my fix. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's, a, it's so amazing, but you know, that's just the way it was. Okay, there's 217 flats in Trillick. Mm. Can you tell us what it feels like to be living somewhere with that amount of people? Um, yeah, living beside that many people, you don't hear anyone, so you don't think, you would think, oh my God, you're gonna hear like banging or like, but because the, concrete is really thick you can't hear anybody so you don't feel like too weirded out or like they're invading your space um, and also because the flats go out up and down you also don't feel like oh I can hear my neighbor or see him on the balcony or things like that occasionally if you were on the balcony you might see um, some odd things came down actually. You'd see people throw things off their balcony sometimes. I uh, had a nappy go past once. Um, <laughs> bits of food. I think people eat their food and then they might, you know, that's quite good for the ground though. So you don't really. <laughs> so that was quite funny. You'd be like, oh, nappy. <laughs> But I didn't mind living close to other people. I thought it was nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>